any corporate structure wanting to open and operate a business in California has to go through the Secretary of State's office. In the last 10 years, has the climate for a California business improved? The Secretary of State oversees the election process for all the, all the elections in California. In the last 10 years, would you say that the election process has been simple, fair, open, unchallenged? Do you think there's room for improvement in the election process in California? Where you live today, do you know who your representatives are? And do you feel that they are truly representing you at the state level? Do you feel corporate money in politics is a good thing or bad thing? The Secretary of State's office is vested. Their office is vested in campaign reform. One of their critical task sets is fair and open elections. In the last 10 years, do you think the electoral system has become increasingly more democratic or less democratic? This cycle, the California voters have instituted an open primary process. Basically, anyone can run in the primary. The open primary is a bit confusing. What they mean by open is Anyone can enter the primary, but only two people can go through to the general election. The top two people in the primary go to the general election. Would you say this is more democratic or less democratic? When a telephone poller calls you and asks if you've heard of some people, and they list a couple of names, would you say that's more democratic or less democratic? Did you know that for-profit polling establishes who participates in public debates? Polling that gauges name recognition of candidates. Based on that polling, entities that have nothing to do with the state government, this is a public job interview. So you have a public job interview for a public servant Basically, a corporate vendor by telephone poll measures and determines who is allowed to participate in the televised debate. This device is in collusion with the Republican and Democratic parties. Those two parties always exclude any candidates from the debates who aren't Democrat or Republican. Always. When the various candidates are jockeying to see who will be in a debate, some of them collaborate with each other and others do not. Once a debate is announced, if a Republican candidate or a Democratic candidate agrees to participate in that debate, third party candidates are automatically excluded from that event. The minute a third party or non-party candidate is included in a televised debate, the Republican and Democratic candidates refuse to participate. This is an ongoing problem in many states. It's basically a collusion between the two major parties. It's a collusion that's enabled by polling requirements. The polling requirements depend on polls that are conducted by entities for profit. They sell these polls. It's all linked to advertising. Two years before someone announces they're going to run for an office, they have to show their money to the advertisers. If they show the appropriate amount of money, their name gets included in the polls for two years. A third party candidate or an independent, they can't wave those dollars in front of the advertisers fast enough or early enough. They literally never get included in the polls. Their name is never asked to you on the telephone. If you're unfortunate enough to be called by these people, they'll ask you if you've recognized the major Republican. They'll ask you if you've recognized the major Democrat. They'll never mention the words Green Party, Libertarian Party, or any of their candidates. They just leave that out conveniently. Why, why is it that you think they do this?